So how are the Christmas markets in each country or maybe how is Christmas celebrated, some of the traditions? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, you can go. Okay, I spent a lot of uh, Decembers in Mexico, so I have a lot of experience with that. Um, so by markets, I'm thinking you're talking kind of like about um, like toy shopping and just kind of like Christmas gift shopping, stuff like that. Um, so in Mexico, we celebrate Christmas differently. Um, so it's kind of more like about the actual uh, birth of Jesus Christ. And we don't do like the whole exchanging of gifts with like Saint Nick and you know Saint Santa Claus thing. Instead, we do um, like Three Kings Day, and that's in January. And so on Christmas, you kind of just go to church and you spend time with your family. Um, and so you don't really see a lot of like people rushing around at stores and like buying gifts to get everybody. And that's something we do differently too. Like we don't do uh, a gift for you and a gift for you and a gift for you. We kind of just do Three Kings Day on January 6th. And then you just get your gifts from Three Kings and that's it. We don't really have like, um, like here, you gotta go buy everybody a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so in Germany, Christmas is huge. Um, the Christmas markets are incredible. They make me so happy. I love Christmas. <laughs> um, so the Christmas markets, basically the whole center of a city like shuts down, but also comes alive because it'll usually be snowing. There's a lot of snow in Germany, usually in the winter time. And all of these different um, like stands open up and there will be a lot of different foods. Sometimes there's like chocolate covered fruit, so chocolate covered bananas, and there'll be traditional German food as well, like schnitzel um, or spätzle, which is like pasta. And then there's always um, glühwein, which is a fermented wine. And there's also Kinderwein, which is a non-alcoholic version for kids. Um, and there's just lights everywhere and there's Christmas music playing. And then there's tons of traditional um, crafts that are sold. So I remember one time I got this like hedgehog that was made out of a, a pine cone. It was really cute. Um, <laughs> but there's all these different crafts and um, there'll be people singing and it's very fun. Um, yes, so Christmas is magical <laughs> in Germany, I think. Um, and they have, yeah, a lot of decorations and the whole like Santa Claus and opening gifts. Hmm. And Irish Christmas, I would say, is pretty similar to how Americans um, celebrate Christmas, but I would say that it's not quite as big as in, you know, America, we start celebrating so early and or not celebrating, but, you know, um, all the decorations are out and things for sale are out to, um, like Bernice is saying, to buy presents for everyone. And it's still similar like that in Ireland. And they um, put up lights, and but there's no big markets like there are in January, really. Um, it's just very similar with, you know, they have more toys out in the stores and you go and get gifts. And Ireland's also very um, a very culturally Catholic country. And so a lot of people on Christmas um, will go to Mass and they will go and spend the days with their families because um, Ireland is not a very big country, so it's pretty easy to get around. Um, it takes only about two hours to get from one side to the other. So people try to go mostly and spend at least the day with their family, if not a couple of days, um, because businesses do tend to shut down similar to the American um, ways that they shut down right around Christmas time um, or on Christmas Day. So yeah, pretty similar to American celebrations. And um, so I'd like to let know a little bit more about Irish culture and history. So if there's a few facts that you want to share. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's complicated history, yeah. I'm sure. But. Yeah. Um, let me think of how to say this concisely. Mm -hmm. So in Ireland, it's um, there's a big Celtic history. So people who um, don't know how to explain this exactly. Um, they're kind of like the native people of Ireland. Um, and there's a lot of ruins still in Ireland of these Celtic burial grounds and of these castles. And there's just 
so many castle ruins um, in Ireland if you just drive about from a history of not only the Celtic clans, which was a big thing, and the clans controlled different parts of the country, but also then kings and lords who began to control different parts of the country. And then when the British began to rule, um, they would send in British lords to control, or um, they would send in like laws that the Irish uh, lords had to answer to. Um, so just a big history of controlling different parts of the country. And I think that can be seen still with, um, there's something called the GAA, which is like the Gaelic Athletic Association. So a lot of Irish games that we don't have here really, such as hurling and camogie and games that are kind of like lacrosse, kind of, but they're like Celtic games. Um, and so those are all very split up into the different counties. And there's a lot of pride behind the counties and what part of the country that you are from. And there's also a big um, time of immigration from Ireland where a lot of people left. And so one saying is that, you know, there are Irish all around the world because a lot of people ended up coming to the US like my grandmother and a lot of other people, but also to Australia, to Argentina, to the UK, just really all over the world. Um, so there's a cool connection between Ireland being such a small country, um, so small that it's only half the size of North Carolina, which it doesn't seem like that when you look at a map, but having this big impact and this big um, display over the world. And there's a split between Ireland and Northern Ireland? Yes, there is a split between Ireland and Northern Ireland. Um, there was a big um, I guess dispute, you know, the British were the Protestant church and wanting to control Ireland and make it all Protestant, but a lot of the people were Catholic. And so there was this big religious dispute of Catholic versus Protestant. Um, and there where has been um, some troubles and some wars that have gotten really violent over the Catholic and the Protestant and, you know, which one is right, what, who's going to control what. Um, but they're basically the top part of Ireland is part of the UK. Um, Northern Ireland has remained part of the United Kingdom and was considered like the Protestant part of the country, while the Republic of Ireland was um, very Catholic. And however, even though it is part of the UK, it's still one country. You can drive back and forth without needing a passport. Um, people there, people in Northern Ireland have like dual citizenship between the UK and Ireland. So it's interesting. Um, so, Berenice, were you ever able to help make tamales in Mexico or any other traditional foods that you maybe have made? You guys are making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I just want you guys to keep in mind um, that Mexico has very distinct areas. Um, so, like, my all my experience has come from living in the rural parts of Mexico. Um, so, the the urban areas are a little bit different but um yes <laughs> yes i have um usually every year we go um to my grandma's house well we have to go to all three of my grandparents house because then they'll feel bad if we don't go <laughs> but we usually go to my grandma's house and kind of help her make food and then the rest of my grandparents already have food but uh some traditional plates are like tamales which is um how do you explain it it's called masa which is a uh, corn flour mixed with like water and uh, some sort of fat um and then you spread it on a corn husk and then you put meat inside and you wrap it up and then you steam it and it's so good <laughs> and then there's other that's kind of like there's you know like in here in the u.s you have um what do you guys have for like christmas like Ham? Mm -hmm. Ham. <laughs> okay, for Christmas in Mexico, we usually have like tamales, uh, pozole, which is um, uh, hominy, and pork meat, and then like all kinds of different sauces mixed in. And those are the two big ones. Um, but yes, I have, and it's amazing. <laughs> And Molly, would you want to tell us a little bit more about how much Germany has changed since World War II? So a little bit of yeah. modern history. Um. Yeah. Sure, yes. Big question. Mm -hmm. um, definitely has changed. So let's see. Currently, Germany is... Politics are definitely different in Germany than they are in the U.S. There's many more parties. So instead of just two parties, there's 
lots of parties that work together in what's called a coalition government. And so right now it's led by um, the Christian Democratic Party, it was led by Angela Merkel. Um, so she's a woman and she leads the country and she's also the de facto leader of the European Union. Um, and then they work in coalition with the Social Democratic Party and also the Green Party. Um, since World War I, Germany has been a leader in renewable energy resources, a leader in um, addressing issues of global warming and climate change. Um, there, after World War, or sorry, wait, World War II, sorry, that's what I meant. After World War II, um, the country was reunified. Um, so it had been split, if you guys have heard of like East Germany versus West Germany, um, had been split between Eastern powers and Western powers, um, but the country was reunified. And um, today still there are some differences. Um, you can tell the Eastern part of the country is still has like a weaker economy than the Western part of the um, country today. So there's lasting effects from that. Um, but it has been, they have been like growing together for sure. Um, if you guys are familiar with like the Berlin Wall falling or anything, that was part of like reunification. Um, and, oh, um, a big thing that's been happening in Germany has been how they deal with the immigration or the refugee crisis. Um, so the past couple of years, Europe has seen a really large influx of refugees coming from the Middle Eastern area or like Eastern Europe. Um, and Germany has been a leader in that, in setting like very open um, laws for like accepting migrants and refugees in to the country. Um, unfortunately, this has seen some backlash as there wasn't quite enough infrastructure like prepared to handle such an influx of people in general. Um, so there's been a rise of a more like far right party um, that definitely has been running on like nationalist values um, and this can especially be seen in like Austria but there's a very very strong presence of the far right um, but still in Germany um, it's still like a Christian Democrat social Democrat green leadership um, happening but yeah so reunification has occurred since World War II but there's still lasting effects um, uh, from that separation and um, yeah we're, we're still working on how to like handle the refugee crisis. And um, Kat, if you could tell us a little bit more about the, the separation of Northern and uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland, and also a question of how things have maybe changed since the 1990s. Yes, so I'm not the best about giving like specific information about this. Um, I only know a little bit more of an overview. Um, but basically, there's this thing, like I said, called the Troubles, um, and it was when there was a lot of violence outbreak between Northern and Southern Ireland and the Protestant and the Catholics and, you know, what was going to be allowed in Ireland. And um, there, I think someone asked about the IRA, and that was basically um, kind of like its own, like... It's, it's called the Irish Republican Army, um, and it actually, I actually wrote a final paper on oh, this for one of my classes. <laughs> Go ahead, then. Um, so the IRA, um, originally, actually, so with the Troubles, with Northern Ireland versus Ireland, or it's like Southern Ireland, um, there was just a movement in Northern Ireland um, of Catholics, and it started out as a nonviolent movement for just better treatment of Catholics in Northern Ireland. Um, when that movement began, it saw severe repression from the state. It was crushed violently. Um, basically, long story short, in response to that, the peaceful protesters um, and the people who had originally been behind that saw a lot of radicalization. And so it developed into a violent conflict. Um, and the IRA 
emerged and was declared as a terrorist organization. Um, and so there is a lot, a lot of turmoil in Belfast, especially um, with bombings by the IRA um, against um, Protestants and also just like the British in general still um, having like lasting effects in there. Um, but yeah, that stemmed from a violent suppression of originally peaceful protest. And thank you. Um, and for in response to the 1990s, I remember um, from like an outside of Ireland perspective and like my family here in America, they when I went there, they're like, oh, like, be careful, Northern Ireland, you shouldn't go. Um, like still thinking that, you know, this is a dangerous and violent place. And I was even able to see um, one of the most bombed buildings in the world that happened during that time. But today, like those, um, I would say those feelings really aren't there anymore between, especially between like younger people in Ireland, especially. Um, it's still very open. Like I said, people can pass through um, very easily. It's very safe to go there. There's not any of those um, harsh feelings between the Protestants and the Catholics anymore, except for maybe people who um, were very tied, like older people who were really tied to those uh, politics when they were growing up. But I would say now in modern Ireland, um, it's the violence is seen as part of the history and not something that is um, taken in like happening right now, if that makes sense. So it is a very safe place. It's not dangerous anymore. So real quick, one more question. Um, the difference between how Germany and American cultures are the same, so maybe one or two similarities, and then I'll wrap things up. So the difference between um, or how they're the same i think how they're <laughs> okay yeah. um oh germany uses euros to answer that question that just popped up um germany uses euros um part of the as part of the like european union um i'm pretty sure almost every member of that uses euros but yeah um so some ways that they're the same Oh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, people in general are very caring, um, even though it might come off as like they're kind of distant from the get go because that's a difference in culture where Americans just tend to like open up immediately. It takes longer usually for Germans to like feel comfortable doing that, but that doesn't mean that they don't care. And I think that's something that's often like a stereotype of Germans that they're just mean, um, which is I think really an undeserved stereotype. Um, just because they're not as like, outgoing at first doesn't mean they don't care. So that's something that I think is similar um, that people do genuinely like want to know how you're doing um, and they really are interested in how your life is going and making sure that you're healthy, making sure that you're taking care of yourself. Um, and then on just a general level, I mean, when I was living there, like we, I lived in a German community, people are just pretty similar. Like you just walk around um, on your daily, day-to-day -day activities. Um, a lot of my like German friends also liked to like sing or I actually was in an Irish dance school um, with German and American kids. And we were like very good friends. Some of my closest friends were German. Um, and we just enjoyed talking about dance together and talking about how school was going. Um, so there, there's a lot of a lot in common of just like being people. Good. So thank you everyone for all of your questions and we hope that you learned some things about Germany, Ireland and Mexican culture today. Um, and we'll be back in about five minutes with our next presentation, which is on the Montagnard ethnic group of Vietnam. And we're going to learn about music and tools and weaving and different aspects of that culture in about five minutes. So we'll see you guys back soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.